Hey guys, welcome to another video. Thank you so much for tuning in and today I am going to cover everything that Functional Patterns has helped me with over the last year. It's been a year since I joined the 10 week online course and started to take part in the 10 week online course as it were to learn about my body, to learn a bit more about the release work, the posture, the integrated corrective exercises that they've got in the 10 week online course at Functional Patterns. And then I moved my way through the Functional Patterns training system. I've still got a long way to go. I joined working with a practitioner. If you haven't caught any of my videos before, then please check them out. Come back to this one or just watch this one and you'll see a whole bunch of cliff notes anyway. So. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Brendan, I'm a movement coach, and I was brought into functional patterns through my own dysfunctional movement. And I thought I had it all together. I thought I was the best coach in the world. I was the most functional coach in the world. And then I realized that my own training in fact hurt me. It caused an injury, which then led to chronic pelvic pain syndrome. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically very, very horrible. So if you're a man watching this for an answer to chronic pelvic pain syndrome, then understand this. I'm sitting in a pair of jeans, right now sitting on a chair with no cushion and I'm pain free. Okay. I'm pain free. And how am I pain free? Well, I'm pain free because of functional patterns. And the most important thing that you can think about in this is the 15 or so different things that they've helped me overcome by simply just working with that 10 week online course, working with a practitioner and also doing my own research on everything, like learning about this. It's learning process to kind of undo pain and chronic pain. And in the process, I've learned a hell of a lot. All I can say is thank you to Functional Patterns. Thank you to my coach Anais for his wonderful work and how he's been able to stick with me all this time. Even at the beginning, I probably, I still probably look like a complete idiot doing half the stuff that we're doing, but I'm working on it. I'm working on becoming better and more functional. So without further ado, here are 15 different things that Functional Patterns has helped me with. I've got my iPad here just to kind of run through them and uh, sit back and relax. If you've got chronic pelvic pain syndrome, this is going to be very important for you. And if you don't, and you're just in pain, understand there's context to all of this. Now, one of the first things, <laughs> the most important thing, obviously, because that, you know, my brain is just a trough of dirt and darkness, <clears throat> erectile dysfunction. This is the first thing that has been the most important one that I've overcome through functional patterns. When I got injured and hurt my pelvis and I had chronic pelvic pain syndrome or prostatitis was the original diagnosis, right? When that happened, I had no erection. It's funny how like talking makes your voice go blah, blah, blah. Erectile dysfunction was like one of the, the, the craziest things. I've always been one of those people that like never struggled in that department, okay? And, and it was like from one extreme to the other. I went from not having an erection to actually having like middle of the day, just be sitting there. And all of a sudden, things down there just started going haywire. And I needed to go and do something about it, if you catch my drift. Now, that wasn't a fun experience because what that often led to was, which we'll talk about in a second, was cramping and severe chronic pain after an orgasm. So it didn't help that I didn't have one and it didn't help when I did have one because it was pressure there. It just felt like something needed to happen, right? So we'll get into that. But chronic pelvic pain syndrome, essentially I had all the symptoms that you can imagine when it comes to it. So I'll probably list them on screen for you, but understand golf ball in the butt. It's the one I felt the worst. It was basically like having something shoved up my bum 24 hours a day. At the same time, I had terrible bladder control. I was peeing at least four times a night. I actually had to change my shorts or my underwear um, most days just because of the, the leakage that would happen. And it would be because there was no control over that, that bladder because there was so much pressure and tension down there. So that's a huge, a huge one on my part. I used to get incredibly hot downstairs. I used to have this stabbing pain as well, like a hot poker was being stuck through the golf ball that was lodged in my butt, uh, right up into my rib cage on the left-hand side. And that has now stopped completely. I can actually, 
there'll be some days where where maybe it'll come back but then i just check in on on certain elements of like issues that i have um my rib cage shifts too far left and my hips shift left and i hike my left hip which causes all this compression so that was that was one that i i don't miss to be honest with you but cramping after orgasm this is probably the one that that scared me the most it was about um like three months into having chronic pelvic pain and you know i had a 45 minute spasm after ejaculation essentially and I, I i eventually think i just passed out because of the pain i was in so much pain that my fiance thought she was gonna have to call an ambulance <laughs> and i was like what's an ambulance gonna do they can't really do anything like you can't i mean they could they could probably stick a hand up there or something i i don't know what they <laughs> what they would do probably give me muscle relaxants and more drugs and that brings me on to the next one uh, which isn't even on this list drugs like i was handed so many pills by the doctors i threw them all away because i was like no i'm not going to do any of this anymore i'm just going to stick with uh, functional patterns and at the time a little bit of cbd oil with thc in it because that really helped to bring down my levels of uh, inflammation and stress so that was very helpful it should not be a crux it should not be something that you should crux 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 should not be something you lean on uh blood in my sperm was another one that uh, is gone now i used to get blood in my sperm that was very bad at the beginning and then it's kind of gotten less and less over time um because if you think about like a spasm in the pelvic floor and an issue in the pelvic floor the prostate just sits like right there and it's literally if there's like an in inflamed muscle um and and the muscle's really damaged that's all going to press against that prostate so the prostate was was not a happy bunny overall my posture has improved massively i've seen huge improvements there in terms of my rib cage compression in terms of my actual thoracic spine uh, my neck my tongue position in my mouth something i never even thought about but my tongue used to sit in the bottom part of my of my mouth and some days it still goes back there by default and i have to be more conscious of of holding it up into the the top of my mouth which is where it should rest i do do a lot of talking as well which probably doesn't help things i talk a lot so the tongue position improved posture we've seen some of the posture videos if you haven't seen those already go back and check all the other videos out i'm faster in running i'm completely pain free in the perineum when i run so the perineum is the bit between the butt and the balls for the man and for the women it's same kind of area but without the balls running on that imagine having like a shock absorber in your car that didn't work like everything just goes doom 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 when you run and step and it was the same when i walked like the first few weeks i couldn't even walk like i was like that bad i had to just lie down and hope that the pain would go away so we've talked about that we've talked about uh, bladder control so as a result of not going to the loo every night all night i'm sleeping better and i'm actually sleeping better because i'm also sleeping in better positions my snoring still hasn't gone away which is something i need to keep working on that's to do with mouth breathing and again to do with the tongue posture over training that that to me was like even when i was still like in chronic pain i wanted to train you got to understand like i was pushing myself so i would do things that i shouldn't have been doing like squats deadlifts i was like do you know what the pain's not going to go away but i can still do these things it just hurts so i'm going to dose myself up on cbd oil and just hit the gym and just train and it didn't it didn't work out so don't be the person doing that i couldn't wear certain clothes i like you know i've said to you i'm wearing jeans right now and this is perfect it's like i'm sitting here in jeans a year ago that would have been like agony it would have been the worst thing for me we talked about clothes we talked about sitting in chairs the last couple of ones on this list mean the most to me and the first one is the shopping trolley like being able to go and and do the shopping around a shop and push a trolley that's full um was like the most excruciating thing in the world and i like food you know i do like food but and i don't particularly like shopping but when you don't like something and then you have to go and do something you don't like and then it's even painful for you to go and do it it's not fun right it's not fun that was a big one for me walking the dog was another one like dog pulling on the lead for oh, 
that was savage that was savage especially in winter where it's like muddy and slippery and you know you're sliding all over the place with legs and feet and there'd be times where I'd come back from a walk and I'd just like have to lie down for an hour and just hope that the pain would kind of disappear it would come down a bit and I'd do a few stretches and then I'd kind of carry on without about my day um, the last one is the manual labor element and if you've been watching this channel you'll know that I talked about doing uh, my own little garden allotment thing and as a result of doing more functional patterns of that's one of the things that I'm able to do I can go into the garden and I can dig a hole in the garden I can move a whole bunch of furniture without being in pain and that in itself to me is a massive massive win so this is a thank you, a big shout out to Functional Patterns for the work that they've done with me. But more importantly, I think just some context for some people out there who might be on the fence and like, you know, what should I do? Should I really go in on this? Because it kind of looks a bit weird and, you know, it, it doesn't always make sense when you see something like this. I understand that the most important thing you can do is put your health first in this world. I can testify to that having lost all my weight and also moving into being a coach putting yourself first from a health perspective is probably the most important thing you can do and a lot of it starts with just how do you move okay well if you don't move very well what can you do to improve your movement well you can eat better you can sleep better you can learn about breathing better that's a question that's popped up a couple of times now does functional patterns deal with people breathing yes Absolutely yes, but not as the main driver of recovery. Breathing is an integrated thing, as is movement. So you have to learn how to breathe and move. You have to learn how to walk, stand, run, all these good things. And I'm still learning it, and I'm looking forward to learning even more over the coming months and years. But if you found that useful, please hit the like button, please hit the share button, please subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next videos coming up over the next few weeks and months. I hope you like this setup. By the way, I've spent some time putting the watermelon thingy up and the plant in the background to make it look all super nice and YouTube-y. Got the microphone here, a little bit of like audio just to get the audio right for the channel. So let me know what you think about that if you've stuck out this far. What else have I got to say? Nothing really. Have a great day wherever you are in the world. Stay strong and keep moving. Catch you soon.